Hi guys. Hey everybody. Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games. Today we're playing Pillars of Eternity. Yeah, from Obsidian Entertainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this game does offer, obviously, as you can see, a character creation uh, aspect. We already made a character. Yeah, we figured um, we'd we'd kind of just just uh, go right into expedite the game. that. Yeah. So yeah, she's basically a giant who's a fighter, who's an explorer. And she's got a portrait, and she's benevolent. Let's go. Her name is <laughs> yeah! Calthor. I said Calthor the Victorious, and Cujo said, no, because give her a normal no. name. All right. So, <laughs> off the bat, this game has introduced a couple things. First off, the character creation aspect is awesome. It's, they offer a wide variety of stuff that you can do. It's, it's really in-depth. All right. The caravan master Andrew finishes. Through Baldur's Gate fashion. We've got some interesting... Okay, should we, should we read this? Go for it. All right, the caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for em <laughs> emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Ooh, there's some voice the acting. Ooh. That's right. Beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. So I, I like that they, they only do the voice acting for the spoken part. Everything well, else you can sort of read for flavor. It, yeah, it would be a little weird if he was like, he nods yeah. toward a Well, they could have met. had a narrator, like a King's Quest narrator. I, I mean, honestly, I, I kind of would have well, liked that, but... Yeah. Eh, either way, it, it works. So, you, you basically convinced me that we should so play this game because it's a Baldur's Gate homage, and... Uh, yes. I, I like Baldur's Gate for what it is. It's Tonight, definitely um, archaic now compared to a lot of games. Yeah, but that's... Um, I mean, this but is it, like a, a trip down memory lane for a lot of people who are fans of the series. Yeah, absolutely. I actually didn't play Baldur's Gate until I was already an adult. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I actually picked it up because my, my mentor, uh, when I was in school for game design, he actually worked on Baldur's Gate. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, I should probably check out the game that Bob worked on. <laughs> That's awesome. Basically, story-wise, you're in a caravan heading somewhere because there's a lord who's offering land to people who want to start a new life, whatever. Uh, on your way there, you get super, super sick. The caravan stops to take care of you, and then they also find that there's a tree in the way of the caravan, so you can't go forward anyway. Hmm. So um, you are told to... Um, I know you there are two things that need to happen. Water needs to be refilled for the night, and then also um, somebody's going to help you go and find these berries that should make you feel better. Um, so you can ask about where the berries are, what's wrong with the ruins, why is it dangerous, blah, 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 blah. Do we want to just hammer that out, or do we just go dive in? Let's, let's dive in, actually. I, I want to see how the game plays. And plus, you've already done this quest, yeah? Or yes, I have. Okay, so the game always starts you off in the same quest, then? Yes. Okay, that's kind of nice. Although... <clears throat> a little, maybe a little weird, depending on what character build you make, but yeah, um, I guess the idea is that no matter where you come from, you're looking for land for a new start or something. One thing that is cool about your character creation is that depending on your class, race, background, whatever, certain dialogue options will perk up and offer a different take on the story. Mm -hmm. Kind you can afford. Ooh, she's feisty. <laughs> the character creation is really interesting too because they give you at least what six different layers of options for building out like your where your character's from, what class they are, what race, what sub race, um, and every single choice you make changes some aesthetic um, element on your character. Yes, and I thought that was really interesting because that was probably a ton of work for the artists. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it ultimately I wonder from there is how much do your characters change their appearance as you play the game mm -hmm. so like if you equip a different um, piece of armor or if you equip a different weapon does it actually change it on your character mm. Anyone needs I think that is a thing for, uh, for instance in my personal playthrough I play I picked a ranger who's obviously range and he's got a familiar and all that stuff she her weapon set was entirely different she had a sword and shield mm -hmm. in this she, it looks like she's dual wielding something to suit my class um so then the weapons will definitely change yes oh, i wonder totally. if the armor ever, ever changes i mean i feel like why wouldn't it um a whole wagon full of goods to sell but not enough shirts for the road say is there anything you need oh so he's basically going to he's, barter he's with you beginning, take a look. Beginning merchant. merchant so we have where was it under gold pieces or 100 copper. Sorry, so copper we pieces. pretty much have enough to buy maybe one thing, maybe two things if we're 
depends on what it is that you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, obviously, some of that stuff down here is not going to happen. So. I assume we start with some stuff, though, yeah? I mean, we come with the spears. This is my stash. Does uh, it show things that, that are equipped? Mm, I don't think so. Character. There we go. Kalthor. Party. Oh boy. Arm to the teeth. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot. There is a lot of stuff on here. I mean, so these I mean these kinds of games are great for the people that love number crunching anyway. Yeah. It's it's the same kind of deal that um I think a lot of Dark Souls players really thrive on. Yes. Absolutely. Um totally different type of gameplay, but well I guess I, I'm assuming that it's totally different type of gameplay. Oh, here we go. Is combat turn based in this? Okay, so you do come up with um, default equipment. It is not turn based, it's it's real time. It is, okay. Yes. But whenever you start a conflict, Something else you, need? you uh, the game pauses, giving you an opportunity to decide what your party's going to do, where they're going to go, what enemy they attack. Okay, I'm, I'm curious to see how that plays out yeah. then. Um, let's go for... Um... Can you compare stats of equipment? So like if you select a crossbow... Uh -huh. There we go. So... Compare. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's essential. I think. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the Shant. biggest. Whoa! Wait, how does? Oh, okay. So it just shows you what kinds of enchantments you can actually place on it. Quality, secondary damage, and slaying. That's pretty cool. So yeah, one one critical design flaw that a lot of older games that um, were built kind of like this had is that they didn't have a compare oh, mechanic. Shit. Yeah. Um. And so there was no way to know whether or not something was better unless you closed out of the shop, looked at your current equipment, jotted down the stats of the equipment, went back to the merchant menu, yeah. and then compared it there. And it was just, it's nightmarish. Yeah. Uh, we won't go for that. Um, do you have another spear? Something I can... I, I'd say let's just jump into it. I, I don't think, I think they probably started us off with equipment that's going to be sufficient to handle the first mission. Yeah. Um, and I think that's pretty important too, right? Like, I think it's very easy for a player to just enough. skip that merchant. Yeah. And so, say, for example, we did, and the, the uh, following quest was so difficult that we had to have bought something in order to pass. Yeah. Um, then that's not really fair. This is true. So you have two people in your party. Mm-hmm. Somebody's helping me find these berries, and then you. Okay. Are these... Do you know how many people you can have at your party at, like, the most amount of people you can have? I don't. I'm not sure. So that's just where we came from, I guess. I can. I assume you can have at least more than one, though, yeah? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's really cool. Because if you look down here, it has the character portraits. There's mm -hmm. a lot of room down there. Uh, I think it said you could have, like, a five-person party. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoy this. Oh, hey, yeah, I guess he left to go find the water, which is cool. Hmm. Um, dang it. Uh, oh, this, because this is your Steam account. Yes. I was like, wait, I turned those I notifications said, off. Yeah. So I like that it, f oh, see, right here. Okay, so it, it pauses. It also lets Ooh. you know immediately when. Nice that you can expand that too. Yeah. So, pauses the game. Shows you where the enemy is, where the circle is that you can click on to attack, whatnot. Also giving you an opportunity to s decide what you want your party members to do. Okay. So you have the weapon sets for her, which right now looks like she's just using both. One-handed axe. Yeah, and the other one is just unarmed. Mm, one-handed okay. axe with a torch, and she's got access to knock down, so she's a warrior. Um, and uh, are these abilities, like knock down, is it a, like replenishes over time kind yes. of thing. Um, okay, that makes sense. And this one... Since it's only one enemy, too, it seems like we might as well just kind of blow our load, right? Yep. And then whenever you are set, spacebar or click here. When you're... <laughs> when you're out of combat, do your abilities just automatically regenerate, or yes. does it still, like... So an encounter is a battle. Um... One per encounter. Once okay. the battle ends, your stuff replenishes. Except it didn't. Or did it? It did. Okay, it's just inactive because the battle's over. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, wolves plot, yeah. Is that for another quest? No, it's just... Oh, it's just, just an item? killing a wolf. Oh, okay. Um, and that's just stuff you can sell, yeah? Yep. Absolutely. Vendor trash, as Ian calls it. Oh, see, that is... Okay. 
So, one minor thing. Uh, conflicts are supposed to start, give you options for controlling different members of your party, whatnot. Oh, yeah, it yeah. has RTS controls. That's yeah. interesting. Um, some, something that's kind of annoying is you have to use the arrows on the right side of the keyboard to control the camera. Oh, or really? Or you could use the mouse. But but there's no like W A S D. Lost doesn't do anything. Really? Well, it does do stuff, but it's not control the camera. That's kind of poor um, keyboard yeah. design. Although I guess have you tried? Oh, well, no. This probably doesn't work with a gamepad, right? Uh, I don't believe so. No. I feel like if you tried, it would be a nightmare. Yeah. There's just too much going on in the, in the interface. Yeah. Um. This game really is not so much meant for. Um, <laughs> For that. Yeah, I, I do wonder though why they chose not to use the Wazda stuff to move around the map. I swear, I know where stuff was. Although is... that's great for left handed players because they could just. <laughs> <laughs> Although I I feel like most left handed people still use a keyboard and mouse in the right handed configuration mm. because it's just how we're taught. And mice are always designed for right-handed people. This, get the weird shape to it. True. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember where. You're trying to find the water, right? I'm actually trying to find these berries to make you feel better. Ooh. Because remember, you're sick and you've got whatever going on. Um, so there's a lot of exploration in this game. Absolutely. I guess more than I expected. It reminds me a lot of... Um, Diablo. Uh, That's a thought that I have. I mean, sort I of. I think anywhere. Diablo... Well... <sighs> I, uh, see, I never actually played Diablo 1 and 2. This is definitely not like Diablo 3. Um, not at all. Diablo because 3 that, was all about combat. Yeah, it was. that was just an action game. Um, Where? What? I thought... Did the map change? Oh, that would be interesting. If the map does change. I, mean, I, I wonder because... Last I remember was that it was supposed to be like up here. Like the up berries into the were left. supposed to be up there. Huh. So. We'll tell you what, we'll we'll figure that out off screen and we'll come back in the next episode. Cool, sounds good. Uh, question of the day. Um, do you think know. RTS controls work for... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, what do you think about the, the RTS controls of having to select your characters and then click and not having, like, Wazda to move around yeah. the, uh, the camera? Um, and, or, or rather, you know, how would you have done it? is maybe the the more specific question. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. See ya.